batteries have come a long way in a very short amount of time. Today, we're gonna go back to basics and we're gonna talk about batteries for portable operations. And I'm gonna tell you what you should look for in choosing a battery that'll meet your needs. So a viewer recently sent me a message uh, about batteries and what type of batteries that I use for my portable operations. That's a big question as I currently use three different batteries depending on the situation, but they all share a common trait. So we're going to dig into battery power. So why lithium iron phosphate and not lead acid batteries? Well, there's two main reasons. Uh, the first is size and weight. Uh, the main component of a lead acid battery is, you guessed it, lead. These batteries are very heavy approximately three to, time, three to five times as heavy as an equivalent lithium battery. If you've had to carry a battery for any appreciable distance, you know you don't want it to be a lead acid battery. The second point is energy density. That's the amount of power a battery is capable of holding. A lead acid battery can hold about 30 to 50 watt hours per kilogram of weight. While a lithium iron phosphate battery is on the line of 90 to 120 watt hours per kilogram. Related to this energy density, a lead acid battery can only be discharged to about 50% of its capacity before it needs to be recharged, otherwise damage to the cells can occur. Lithium iron phosphate batteries can go down to 80 to 90% of their capacity, so they deliver more energy for a longer period of time. It's also important to consider about lithium iron phosphate batteries are their safety features. Now, of course, any battery is dangerous in that it can hold a large amount of power. So like anything electric, you gotta treat it with respect. But the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is intrinsically safer and won't catch on fire or explode from overcharging like other types of lithium chemistries. These batteries also have a what's called a battery management system, or BMS, that regulates the charge input and output of the battery. The BMS will make sure you don't overcharge the battery, and it will prevent you from depleting the battery down to 0%. The BMS will also prevent you from drawing more current than what the cells will allow. This also provides other load balancing and cell management functions. So the BMS is an important part of the operation of lithium iron phosphate batteries. So let's talk about my batteries and why I use them. three different batteries that I use with my FT891. All of these are lithium iron phosphate batteries and none of this, what I'm going to say, is paid promotion. All of these batteries I've purchased with my own money. Uh, the, starting out, uh, the, the, my smallest battery is this 12 amp hour uh, talent cell battery. I've had this battery for oh, pushing four years now. Uh, and I've used this for a lot of uh, parks on the air activations. Works really well for phone operation. Um, if I'm transmitting with a pretty high rate, I can usually get about two and a half, up to three hours of life out of this battery set with my transmitter set to 50 watts. Uh, I like this battery a lot because it's, it's, it's relatively lightweight, so it's easy to pack. Um, takes a real, um, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of space. So this is a, this is a really a nice battery. I'm still I'm still um, really pleased with this battery's performance. Uh, when I started moving up into more of the digital operations, I needed something with a little bit uh, longer uh, life, and I've been using this uh, 20 amp hour. Uh, this is uh, made by Ecoworthy. I've had this battery for oh, at least two years now. Uh, it runs, <laughs> this too is, uh, works really well. Uh, considering the price, I think I paid only maybe like $80 for this. It was pretty inexpensive when I, when I purchased it. And, and these batteries are still available uh, today. I'll put a link in the description down below. Uh, so you could get them at a, at a, at a, at a pretty, good, pretty good price. Uh, I can run, you know, if I'm doing all phone operation uh, on a camping outing, I can run with this battery all weekend. 
Uh, digital operation, if I'm going to start doing FT8, I'll, I'll, this, this, this battery will last me an afternoon. So I can go, you know, a couple hours of phone, a couple hours of digital uh, with the, with the eco-worthy battery. And um, I'm really happy with, uh, with an afternoon activation. Uh, moving on, so I bought this uh, 50 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. It's, it's, it's a Renogy. Uh, initially for the camping trailer, uh, but I've upgraded the trailer to a 100 amp hour battery. So this has been sort of um, a backup to that. And um, it's the battery I usually pull out when I'm going to be running, say, 100 watts for an extended period of time. Like um, when I'm doing a QSO party, you know, if we're doing a QSO party mobile, uh, we're going to be I'm using this battery. Winter field day, uh, summer field day, this is the battery I usually pull out. And uh, when I'm camping, I'll take this battery with me because I can run an entire weekend uh, heavy uh, phone and heavy digital operation. And um, I've yet to, to deplete the capacity of this battery. Uh, 50 amp hours is usually about 625 uh, watt hours of, of capacity. And um, it, runs, uh, <laughs> it, it runs forever, like I said, an entire weekend. Um, with uh, with, a, with a heavy combination of phone and digital operation. Uh, so these are the three batteries that I use and uh, depending on what I want to, you know, f depend on, on how long I want to activate and for what purposes, I'll, I'll pick a battery with a capacity that really meets my needs uh, so I don't have to uh, worry about recharging the battery uh, during that during that activation period and when it comes to charging uh, what I'm using uh, is just an inexpensive uh, smart uh, battery charger this this will do a um, it's a 10 amp charger it'll do lithium lead uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries it also has a repair mode if your battery runs into into problems I've had this charger for maybe six months now um, works good so far it's uh, like I said 10 amp hours uh, usually I can charge this battery in about an hour and a half. Uh, this battery goes really quick and uh, this one will probably take about four or five hours to fully charge if it's, if it's been de depleted. I'm just going to jump in and say that if you find this video interesting and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe. That's my indicator to produce more of this type of content. Thank you for your support. Now in my camping trailer, I used to have a 50 amp hour battery, but about a year ago, I upgraded to a 100 amp hour battery. And the reason why is that even though I've got solar charging on, on the roof of the a trailer and an auxiliary solar panel, uh, if, I, if I parked the trailer in a shady spot, I wanted to be assured that I would have enough power to last an entire three day weekend uh, with the electric refrigerator in the back of the trailer. And with the 100 amp hour battery, I have no problem with that. I can put this trailer in in a uh, in the shade. Um, if I get if I get sunlight, I get sunlight. If I don't, I don't. And it will just keep going all weekend long. So I don't really have to worry about uh, making extra power in in that regards. Uh, the camping trailer does have full time solar charging, but otherwise, you know, when I'm out in the field, I'm not bothering to try to charge my um, batteries. I'd rather uh, bring my, uh, <laughs> I'd rather bring a bigger battery out with me than to take all that time to set up a solar panel and whatnot to charge the battery. Unless we're going to be there for a longer period of time, but I found that even with 50 amp hours using, using it with the radio, I'm, I'm, I'm really good to go for an entire weekend, even, even on the digital modes. So the biggest question I get is how large of a battery am I going to need? Well, the answer depends on two things, how long you're going to be on the air and what your transmit power will be. These two factor into your overall energy consumption. For QRP operations, say 10 watts or less, you can get by with very small lightweight batteries. If you want to transmit at 100 watts, you're going to need a battery that's going to cover that peak amount of current draw. If you're primarily phone operation, uh, you might be able to get by with a little bit smaller battery. And if you're, but if you're running full duty cycle, like one of the many digital modes, then you're going to need a battery that's going to cover that capacity because a battery is not gonna provide more than its rated capacity. If a battery says 20 amp hours, for the most part, it's gonna provide 20 amps of current. You're gonna be able to run 100 watts phone operation with a 20 amp hour battery, uh, mostly because of the efficiency of your sideband signal. Uh, but if you're looking uh, for something, say, you know, with a higher duty cycle, say like FT8, 
uh, you're going to have to cut the transmit power down or you're going to have to use a battery that's going to be able to provide uh, for that peak 20 amp current draw. Uh, the battery management system built into those, the, the lithium iron phosphate batteries just won't let you draw more than their rated capacity. So how will I know if I'm reaching the capacity of the battery or its uh, power handling limits? Well, that's what things like this device are for. Uh, this is an inexpensive uh, power meter and analyzer, and it'll tell you a few things. Uh, the voltage of the battery, the, um, both at, um, at its, its floating voltage and also when you transmit. Uh, it'll tell you the um, amps that you're drawing, the amp hours that you've consumed, and uh, the watt hours that you're, you've consumed. And tracking the amp hours and or the watt hours will let you know you know, how much power you've consumed out of this battery. When you get to within 90% uh, of that value, 80, 90% of that value, you know that this battery is going to be just about depleted and the battery management system is going to shut it down. Uh, if you're um, operating, uh, say, a high duty cycle or at a high um, current draw, you know, maybe 100 watts or something like that, this will tell you that. Um, what you're actually pulling out of the battery because the battery management system is not going to let you draw more current than the battery is able to, uh, <laughs> to provide. If you say you're at, you've got a smaller battery and um, you're trying to transmit at uh, 100 watts, you may only be able to pull 11, 12 amps out of the battery and um, your transmitter is not transmitting at 100 watts if you're only pulling 11 amps out of the battery. A uh, 20 amp hour battery like this uh, will we'll, we'll pull that 19, 20 amps that um, is necessary for a full power uh, transmit. And so the battery, uh, power meter and analyzer will let you know, you know what you're consuming and how much power you've got less. That's really, this is really the most accurate way to, um, to gauge your um, battery capacity. Uh, some people say that these things aren't very accurate, but um, really they're accurate enough uh, for in the use of the field to, to give you an indicator of what your um, power level is, you know, what, what your consumption is, and how much, how much time you've got left uh, before the battery boops out. So if you have any questions about um, batteries for portable operations, uh, what I do for batteries, and uh, things like that, leave them down in the uh, comments down below. I'll try to answer as many of those questions as I can. Uh, but otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Michael, KP9VBR. Have a great day in 73.